الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا First and foremost, I just want to take a moment out to thank the administration of the Masjid who are always very kind to hold these events and then secondly, I want to thank all of the brothers and sisters who again have packed out the Masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a Friday night. I always mention it and I'll say it again. We know what a lot of the Shabab, a lot of young people are doing on a Friday night, right? It is the night where everybody gets high, goes partying, does all types of filth and evil. For you guys to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed something that should be commended. You should feel good about yourselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you out of all of these people to sit here brothers and sisters. You could have been from amongst all of these other brothers and sisters. right? So be someone who is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't look down at them. As you could have been no different. Allah Azza wa Jal chose you brothers and sisters. He chose you. Man yurid illahu bi khayran yufaqihu fi deen. However Allah Azza wa Jal wants good for, He gives him a fiqh in the religion. He gives him understanding in the religion brothers and sisters. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless you all. Before I start the lecture, I think it's worth mentioning a disclaimer. Just in case we have someone here that works for the BBC, or channel 4 looking to cut out what I say right just so he could misinterpret and distort something that I didn't intend right they're following me around guys Allahu alam who is here uh, ala kulli hal, at this moment in time because we've started discussing certain topics some of the Zionists are trying to tra take me down you have the feminists that are trying to get me banned. You have the rainbow team, right? <laughs> Who are trying their utmost best to get me cancelled. But alhamdulillah, none of that has happened, right? I think the most that they'll be able to do is to turn the zebra crossing into rainbow colors. Huh? I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep every single one of us firm and to make us from amongst those who speak the truth. Just now I was sitting with Sheikh Abdul Qayyum from East London Mosque and he was encouraging me and also the new Imam to be individuals who do not compromise, to stay firm upon that which is correct, right? You will be pushed around, you will be bullied, you will be jammed with all types of labels just so you could stop calling to normative Islam, right? So let me quickly read out inshallah ta'ala, just so it could be on the public record, the disclaimer. Those who challenge the normalcy and equivalence arguments of Zionists and LGBTQ advocates are predictably met with the jamming tactic of being labeled bigots, which have been called haters, Likewise, they've polluted my Instagram and also my emails, calling me a hater and homophobes. And homophobes. I'm a compassionate Imam, guys. I'm here to spread peace and compassion. What was I saying? I said haters and homophobes. And also you are called anti-Semitic. So as to preempt reasonable debate, they will call you all of these different names and attach all of these labels to yourself, right? And disagreeing with LGBTQ sexual practices or the practices of non-Muslims, whether they may be from amongst the Jews or the Christians, is neither an enticement of harassment, phobia or violence, but the expression of opinion Firmly grounded in medical literature. Excuse me for boring you guys with this disclaimer. It has to be said. I may mention Jews. That doesn't necessarily mean that I am encouraging anyone to incite violence towards any group or towards any religion. We have vegetarians, right? Who hate meat with a passion. 
Sahih. Vegetarians, they hate meat with a passion. Would any of them now start inciting violence towards meat eaters? That would be unacceptable. And likewise, my brothers and my sisters, if I now put forth a particular argument taken from the scripture, I'm not here, by the way, my brothers and my sisters, to give you my own view or my own opinion on anything. I am just here to quote the scripture, to bring us back to the drawing table, back to normative Islam. And that is simply because normative Islam is under attack. There is an ideological war, brothers and sisters. Your religion is being targeted. It's being tainted. Liberals are on a mission to distort the image of Islam by normalizing and popularizing all that which is what? In contrary to our Sharia. So now subhanAllah the Shaykh was saying, don't be individuals who say everything is halal, 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 halal. If something is haram, we should not feel embarrassed to hold on to our morals and our values. If you want to be someone, my brothers and my sisters, that is respected, whether it may be in your workplaces, whether it may be around your non-Muslim friends, be someone who's principled. Be someone who holds on to his morals and values. Be someone who is ready to say, no, this is a red line and I'm not going to step over it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are more beloved to me than any other human being that's walking on the face of this earth, my brothers and my sisters. We're delivering a lecture today about Christmas. You know what the sad reality is, my brothers and my sisters? Right? The sad reality is, and I'll tell you guys this today, that there may come a time, there may come a time, that we are bullied into practicing Christmas and that which is carried out on this day. And if you don't, they will begin to label you just as today one is labeled for holding on to his religion. We talked about being labeled a bigot, a hater, a homophobe, someone who's anti-Semitic, right? All of these, my brothers and my sisters, all of these labels are just there to shut you down, right? To shut you up so that you eventually give in and conform to that which is the practices of the non-Muslims. Mark my words, my brothers and my sisters. We are already being told, brother, stop being harsh. Right? Once upon a time, they would say, you Islamists or you Muslimics, right, are extremely intolerant. When the Muslims were maybe forcing down certain Islamic practices, down the throats of maybe non-Muslims and liberals. No one is forcing anything down anyone's throat now. It might well be a tweet that is put out and people are getting upset. What happened to being tolerant? Once upon a time you were saying, oh, you're the intolerant ones, you're pushing it down our throats, leave us alone. Haram police, huh? Right? You even have pages on Instagram that says what? Haram police. Making a mockery out of People of relig religiosity. Sahih? Now, you can't even what put your view forward without being labeled with all types of labels and names and whatever. Else. We're going to be reading out certain hadith that speaks about not imitating and resembling the disbelievers. And I may mention the Jews. And I'm just quoting a scripture. Someone may hear this and say, oh, this guy is anti-Semitic. No, I'm not anti-Semitic. Just to let you guys know, for the public record, my father-in-law is actually a Jew. He was in my house the other day and I had a very good time with him, right? A very good time with him. I even drove him to the airport at 5 a.m. in the morning. It was nearly late. Alhamdulillah, one of the guys who worked there knew who I was, took him uh, through the different lanes and he managed to catch his flight. 
you are more than welcome for anyone who's listening if you identify as a Jew to visit me at home and I would really really look after you I will be quoting the scripture that which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned right I want to start our discussion my brothers and my sisters by saying the following just because we say do not do certain practices it doesn't mean that we are against community cohesion. That doesn't mean that we are going to be rude to the non-Muslims. Rather, you as a Muslim, you have a role to play in spreading Islam. Agreed? Your character goes a very long way. A lot of people don't read anymore. Right? A lot of people don't read anymore. Actions speak louder than words. It may well be you exiting from your house. Right? Meeting non-Muslims with a smile that could go a very, very long way, my brothers and my sisters. Right? So I'm going to call you to what I believe to be correct. Right? And that doesn't mean, my brothers and my sisters, like I said, and I'll keep on repeating it, that I'm going to what? Maybe violent towards you, harass you. No. We have a discussion. We can maybe what discuss Islam. Remember, my brothers and my sisters, Dying upon sins is not the same as dying upon kufr and shirk. It's not the same. Someone may die while carrying out a zina, but he believes in la ilaha illallah. While he's doing a zina, he passes away. Right? However, he was someone who believed that no one has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. He had a tawheed and he never fell into a shirk. This person is in a better place than the one who unfortunately, unfortunately is practicing all sorts of kufr and shirk. So we want them to be saved. We have care and concern. This is how the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِيْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ He's extremely eager and caring that we follow that which is correct, right? He, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was desperate that his relatives embrace Islam. We need to come to realization, my brothers and my sisters, that, that whatever society is laying down in front of us is not in our best interest. Just about every year we go, Wherever institutions we study at, there is an ideological attack to tear you away from your religion. And today, inshallah ta'ala, we will walk away bi ta'ala having a good idea of what affects our conduct, what affects our behavior, what causes our beliefs to become tainted, right? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi and this is what I want to start with and this may really shock a lot of you guys, right? He says, أَنَّ الْمُشَارَكَةَ فِي الْهَدْيَ الظَّاهِرِ تُورِثُ تَنَاسُبًا وَتَشَاكُلًا بَيْنَ الْمُتَشَابِهِينَ Imitating and resembling Imitating and resembling a group of people, right? By copying them in how they dress will cause that individual to become affected. It will cause that individual now to be influenced. Even the little things, my brothers and my sisters, I'll give you guys a couple of examples. Right? It says, It causes your manners to change. The way you interact, the way you speak to others, and the way you behave. This is something that, huh? It's pretty apparent. It's pretty clear for people to see. فَإِنَّ اللَّابِسَ فَإِنَّ اللَّابِسَ ثِيَابُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ يَجِدُ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ نَوْعًا ضِمَامٍ إِلَيْهِمْ Let me ask you guys a question. When someone now puts on a thawb and a turban, resembling the people of knowledge, how do you think he will act the moment he puts that on? 
Do you guys agree that he will start imitating the way they behave, the way they walk, the way they are, right? As young as maybe what, one year and seven months or eight months. You give that young child a hijab, you will see her gravitating towards the prayer mat. And that is because she's what? Wearing a particular clothing. Look what he, well, look at what he then says. مقاتلة, مثلا, Subhanallah. And now, when someone wears the clothes of the army, right? Just think about a young child for a moment. You put army clothes onto him, right? What's the first thing he's going to do? He's going to pick up the gun and he's going to what? Huh? He's going to start behaving like these troops, like a general. And that is simply because you have put on a type of clothes onto him, right? The new era cap. By the way, I don't have anything against anyone who's wearing a new era cap. I used to wear a new era cap back in the day. Huh? I used to go to Holloway School. I think now it's called, what is it called, Ahmed? Beacon High. Huh? Beacon High. Beacon High. Right? I come from close to home, guys. But at the time, there was no, this was just a bus stop here. I think there was a shop. Allahu <laughs> Ala kulli hal, the moment you put on a new era cap, my brothers and my sisters, not sisters, I don't think sisters wear new era caps. Maybe they do. I think in America they do. Huh? Got sister wearing hijab, maybe even a jilbab, and then she's got a hat on like that. Huh? Like, you put on the new era cap. And by the way, guys, I'm not trying to have a go at anyone who wears a new era cap. I just want you guys huh, to reflect on this particular point. All of a sudden, how do you see yourself behaving? How do you see yourself walking? What do you begin to think about yourself the moment you put on that new era cap? Right? If you are wearing a thob, my brothers and my sisters, and then you begin to hang around with drug dealers, right? You're not hanging around with drug dealers or gangsters. Are you going to fit in? You're wearing a thob. Are you going to fit in? No. But the moment you begin to dress like them, you'll be easily embraced. You'll feel extremely comfortable around them. You'll fit in right away. Agreed? Anyone here going to Umrah? Put your hand on you going to Umrah. That's quite a few of you guys, right? The moment you touch down and you're wearing jeans, how do you feel? Again, I'm not having a go at anyone who walked into the masjid with jeans on. The moment you touch down onto Saudi soil, Jidda, huh? and you're wearing jeans, or even after you performed Umrah, right? You finish, khalas, you've taken your ihram off. Would you feel comfortable wearing jeans in and around the Kaaba? Let's be honest here. Why is that? Everybody's wearing it. Because everyone is wearing either a thobe or they're wearing a different type of clothing. Huh? You will gravitate, you will gravitate towards those who are dressing a certain way. So the clothes that we wear, my brothers and my sisters, has a big impact in how we begin to conduct ourselves. I've even heard somebody say, Akhi man, you're always talking about imitating the kuffar. We live amongst them. What's the big deal? I'm not going to become like them. Wallah, it's these little things that it starts with, right? Dressing the way they dress, resembling them in their clothing, which then leads to one behaving like them, conducting himself like these individuals, and it's only a matter of time, my brothers and my sisters, that one begins to behave like them. Right? Sorry. It's only a matter of time before one begins to believe that which they believe. Clothes, conduct, and then the belief, my brothers and my sisters. Does that make sense? I hope no one's going to walk away uh, feeling like I'm having a go at them. No, my brothers and my sisters. Think about this point for a moment. The way you dress, the way you dress goes a very long way. Which type of friend circle accepts you, takes you in? Right? Anyone here from Camden? That's from Camden? Anyone here from Camden? Camden Road, they have all of these goths that go there, right? 
Would you call them punks? Huh? I don't mean this as a derogatory term, by the way. I'm a compassionate imam. I'm not here to insult anyone. Right? Punks, goths, or whatever have you. Why is it they all go there? But you don't see them hanging around Holloway. You guys know what goths are, right? Those who are wearing big shoes. Huh? They've got like 12 earrings inside of their ears. And they're all dressing a certain way. They all tend to gravitate towards a particular area in London. Camden Town, right? Camden High Street. I know the area very well. Don't ask me why. Uh, <laughs> Camden High Street. They all gravitate towards there. Uh, they all dress the same. And then they all start behaving the same. Right? One thing leads to another, my brothers and my sisters. And it all started with such a small thing. Something that we downplayed. Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu would instruct the non-Muslims in his time, the kuffar in his time, not to resemble the Muslims. Imagine that. He would tell them not to resemble the Muslim just so there is what? Huh? There is no mix-up between them. It should be known that they are kuffar and non-Muslims. Hmm. You resemble them on the outside, it's only a matter of time before it finishes. You resembling them on the inside. Bear that in mind, my brothers and my sisters. Also, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, in the kitab, Iqtida'u Sarat al-Mustaqeem, he says, Al-Mushabahatu fi al-Zahiri turithu naw'a mawaddatin wa mahabbah wa mualatin fi al-Batin kama anna al-Mahabbat fi al-Batin تورث المشابهة في الظاهر وهذا أمر يشهد به الحس والتجربة. He says, resembling them, right, in how they dress, you know, the outward now becomes similar to how they are dressing, or how their outwardness is. This will lead, this will lead to loving them and having affection towards them. And wanting to even align with them, my brothers and my sisters. That's scary, guys. That is really, really scary. A lot of the time we speak about hanging around with the wrong crowd will lead to you becoming like them, right? Ah, oh, Bon Hoya, they've been telling us this for years. Don't hang around with so-and-so. Huh? As you will end up becoming like him. Sahih? So everyone here has been advised by their parents or someone that cares about them. Don't hang around with the drug dealer. You'll hear people saying, oh, don't worry, they're not going to influence me. Wallahi al-Azim, he even sometimes becomes worse than them. And that is maybe because he's becoming extremely complacent. Right? It's not just that anymore, my brothers and my sisters. And that's not the only way that an individual becomes influenced and affected. Likewise, when you keep on looking at them. The scholars of the past, you know what they would say, brothers and sisters? Don't look at someone who's lazy. Sahih? Don't look at someone who's lazy. Why? This will subconsciously now creep into you. And you'll see yourself behaving in a lazy way, even if he doesn't open his mouth. Today we look at all of these rappers, music videos. You think this doesn't have an impact on how you end up behaving? Huh? You just finished watching that music app, you see yourself walking a certain way. Huh? Dragging your trousers, everybody can see your buttocks, sahih? And that is because of what you kept on looking at, which you became so desensitized to. Right? You looked at it, and then you began to what? Resemble them in the way they dress. Right? Likewise, when it comes to the hair, when it comes to the hair, my brothers and my sisters, Let's be very honest with ourselves today before we go to sleep. I have my hair a certain way. Why? By the way, guys, no one take to offense, huh? I'm not having to go at anyone here. Just before you go to sleep, ask yourself the question, why does my hair look like this? The brother needs a haircut. Huh? Someone needs to tell him. Right? But he has his hair a certain way. Things is actually what... Uh, it looks wonderful. Man, that's right? Why am I making my hair like that? 
Where did it come from? Where did it transpire from? Anyone here remember the 2002 World Cup? I think I asked a similar question last time around and I realized all of you guys are millennials. Huh? 2002 World Cup, does anyone know who won the World Cup? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 2022. <laughs> 20 years ago. Ah, it was Brazil. Do you guys remember who was the top goal scorer? Cristiano Ronaldo. Ah, the other one, Ronaldo. Does anyone here remember his hairstyle? What was his hairstyle? He had hair here? Yeah? And he shaved the rest of his head. Huh? He shaved the rest of his head. As soon as he started, as soon as he started playing like that, everybody started cutting the hair in that manner as well. It all started with what? <coughs> uh, it all started with a look. Wallahi, a lot of you guys, if I asked you now, would you cut your hair like that? Uh, you will look at me in disgust. That's not the moda anymore. Uh? Moda the uh? It's not the current trending style, right? Or the style that is trending. Huh? It's fades now, huh? Or to let your hair grow. Curls. Say. Cut everything, shave it, leave this part. That's what was the trend before. Huh? <coughs> Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, anyone at the time who would wear shorts would maybe be seen as someone who's gay? I lived in a time like that. To wear shorts, right? He would be looked at someone who's what? Hmm. And by the way, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just quoting history, like... Huh? Tell you what happened today? Is there anything wrong with doing that? Huh? Morals shift as time goes on. Huh? This is why we need an external factor to govern us, to teach us what is right and what is wrong. Otherwise, as time goes on, okay, you will see things just changing, right? One day it's okay, one day it's unlawful, one day it's against the law, just like weed now. Weed in most places in America is perfectly fine. Right? As time goes on, morals begin to shift. This is why, my brothers and my sisters, the solution to a lot of that which we see is none other than itself. I'm rumbling on here, my brothers and my sisters. Let me quickly now speak about some of the hadith that prohibit us from resembling the mushriks. Hmm? We have one hadith here with the Prophet Sallallahu said, خَالِفُ الْيَهُودَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُصَلُّونَ فِي نِعَالِهِمْ وَلَا خِفَافِهِمْ Be different from the Jews. And I'm just quoting here the scripture. Just in case again, if anyone wants to call me anti-Semitic, my father-in-law is, anti uh, father is Jewish. And I was extremely nice to him. And if you, old reporter, want to come over for tea, you're more than welcome. I'll treat you better than him. Be different from them. They do not pray, right, in their sandals or in their leather socks. So you go and do it. Did you know, my brothers and sisters, it's actually sunnah to pray with your shoes on or to pray with your sandals on. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done that. It's not just narrated one hadith. The Shaykh of our Mashaykh, Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, may Allah Azza wa have mercy upon him. Right? He was from the great Imams of Al Yemen, passed away some decades ago. He authored a treatise just collecting the ahadith, which encouraged praying with your sandals on. Right? And the reason why he did that is because one time he was in the haram, some guy decided to start wearing his shoes inside of the haram. Some common folks, right? They saw this and they made takfir of him. They said, Ninkan wa gal yahi. Or galu yahi. Sorry, I need to huh? refine my Somali. Excuse me if some of the pronouns are out of place. I have to be extra careful with our pronouns today, right? Now, <laughs> So this man, who of course يعني, is ignorant, 
He hasn't studied his religion. He saw someone walking into the haram wearing his shoes on, which of course wasn't the best idea. Huh? Yes, it is sunnah, but most people, they're not accustomed to it. So why would you go and do that? So they chased him out of the masjid. They called him a gal. This guy is a kafir. So the sheikh decided to author a treatise just collecting the hadith. And I think it was something along the lines of 17 or 18 hadith. 17 or 18 hadith. All stating that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wore his sandals while praying. And at times he would pray barefooted, as mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. So you could do this or you could do that. But the point here is, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tried to be different in something as small as this. Allahu Akbar. Be different from them. What is even more profound, my brothers and my sisters, right? And I think this is extremely, extremely powerful. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, أَنَّ الْيَهُودَ كَانُوا إِذَا حَاضَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ فِيهِمْ لَمْ يُؤَكِلُوهَا The Jews, again I'm just quoting the scripture, the Jews would treat a woman from amongst their families, right? Who has now entered into her, entered into her menses period, right? You know women, they have that time in a month, right? Well, they're on their menses, and this is perfectly natural. In هذا شيء كتب الله عز وجل على بنات آدم. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this is something that Allah Azza wa Jalla has prescribed upon the women of Adam. It is perfectly natural. The Jews would treat this woman who's on her menses in a way which was absolutely disgusting. Again, I'm quoting scripture, guys. They wouldn't eat with her in the same room. Right? They wouldn't eat with her in the same room. وَلَمْ يُجَامِعُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ And they wouldn't mix with her. They would keep her to the side. They would sideline her. وَلَمْ يُسَاكِنُوهُنَّ فِي بَيْتٍ وَاحِدٍ And they wouldn't allow them to live with them in the same house. They would put them in another room. SubhanAllah. And then they talk about Islam being oppressive. Huh? فَسَالَ أَصْحَابُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ النَّبِيَّ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى so the companions, they asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jalla sent down a verse. They ask you about the menses. قُلْ هُوَ أَذَا Say to them that it's harmful, meaning to have sexual intercourse with a woman while she's on her menses. فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ Okay. You should move away from your women when they are on their menses. So if someone may say, isn't this... The same as what the Jews were doing? No. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then commented and he said, Isna'u kulla shayin illa nikah. Do everything with your wives. Do everything with them except the nikah. And in this hadith, and nikah, or this term here means, ay al To have sexual intercourse with them. You can do everything else with them. You can joke around with them, you can sit with them, you can fondle with her, you can hug her. All of that is perfectly permissible. So this now reached the Jews. فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ الْيَهُودِ فَقَالُوا And they said, مَا يُرِيدُ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ أَنْ يَدْعَ شَيْئًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا إِلَّا خَالَفَنَا فِيهِ This man doesn't want to leave anything from amongst the things that we do except that he tries to be different. Subhanallah. This is a very, very important statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There isn't anything that we do accept that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tries to be different. Brother, 2022, stop being extremely harsh. Times have changed, right? Islam needs to be reformed as some of these progressives say, right? It's no longer huh, applicable in today's day and age. Islam should only be what? Considered applicable in the times of the companions. Hmm. You know the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he used to do with his wife? Right? When she was on her menses. If she drank from a cup, I'm teaching you guys how to be romantic now, my brothers and my sisters, when you get married. Huh? You have this cup, right? She would drink from this side. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would pick it up. Right? And then he would drink from the same part 
or the same place that she drank from. This is when she was on her menses. Right? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being different from how the Jews used to, create, uh, used to treat their women. How romantic. And then they talk about how the religion of Islam oppresses women. Right? If you sisters really want to know what Al-Islam says about women and how women should be treated, stop looking at men that are walking on the face of this earth. Right? You'll be surprised. It may even lead certain women leaving the fold of Al-Islam. And that is because the only Islam they see is this guy that got married to them. It's a huge responsibility, my brothers and my sisters. And whenever they have an argument, he uses the Islam card and even then he's distorting it, guys. He's using it to his advantage huh? just so he could bully her into a corner. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Inshallah Ta'ala, maybe around the Valentine's period, I'm going to go through a hadith of how the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was extremely romantic with his wives. Something that we're in dire need of, right? Just going back to the drawing table. If you think about why we have so many of these wicked ideologies, right? Whether it may be feminism, whether it may be the Red Pill movement, whatever it might be. All of these movements are knee-jerk reactions to the opposite. Everyone feels a way now to counter that which is taking place. Sahih? Unfortunately, Islam is the solution to all of these different wicked movements that are out there. And when I say wicked, I'm not talking about when they, oh, wicked, oh, that was great. I'm talking about a, that which is wretched. Wicked was used, what, very differently before. So open up the scripture of our sisters and also my brothers to see how I should conduct myself as a Muslim. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ولا تشبهوا باليهود right? Dye the hairs on your beard and do not resemble the Yehud. Something as small as that. Hmm? Also the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned Hadith Abi Huraira إن الله عز وجل قد أذهب عنكم عبية الجاهلية وفخرها بالآباء Indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has abolished the practices of jahiliya, that which you used to do before Al-Islam. The Muslims, my brothers and my sisters, before they embraced Al-Islam, the companions, they were in a very, very dark state. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in the Quran, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ Allah says, remember the favors of Allah upon you. You used to be enemies with one another. Imagine my brothers and mother, they used to murder one another. Some of the companions, they were murderers. They had the worst of backgrounds. Sometimes we tell ourselves, well, lie, there's no hope for me. Or some of us think that we can prevent certain individuals from entering into Islam, right? Like that very famous tweet that went round. If so-and-so becomes a Muslim, then I'm leaving. Allahu Akbar. She's leaving. Bah. Huh? Right? Controlling who enters into Al-Islam and huh? some of them they were murderers. Right? No matter what that individual's past is, the door of repentance is still open. Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, that some of the female companions they would circumambulate the Kaaba clothless. They were naked. That's how they would what? Go around the Kaaba. Did Allah Azza wa just say, oh no, you're not worthy of becoming a Muslim? La. Right? So there was a lot of ignorant practices that the people used to carry out, if that makes sense. Before Al-Islam came to them. Okay? Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come to abolish these ignorant practices and also boasting about huh, your forefathers. See, people extremely proud, their lineage. And the lineage that they have, 
They use that now to bring others down, belittling them and so on and so forth. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Mu'minun taqi wa fajirun shaqi. Antum banu Adam. You are the children of Adam. You are a child of Adam. Wa Adamu min turab. Adam was created from what? He was created from clay. لَيَدَعَنَّ رِجَالٌ فَخْرَهُمْ بِأَقْوَامٍ إِنَّمَا هُمْ فَحْمٌ مِنْ فَحْمٍ إِنَّمَا هُمْ فَحْمٌ مِنْ فَحْمِ جَهَنَّمٍ Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم instructed them to leave off uh, this conduct of theirs behaving in an ignorant manner. Subhanallah. A hadith, my brothers and my sisters, that wallahi really, really, you know, has a huge impact on my reflection from time to time. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سَنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ شِبْرًا مِشِبْرًا وَذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعًا You are going to follow the ways of those who came before you. Hand span by hand span. Arms length by arms length. حَتَّى لو دخل أحدهم حجر ضب لا دخلتموه. Even if one of them would enter now into a hole of a lizard, Subhanallah. Out of all the examples the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave, why on earth did he say the hole of a lizard? Right? What do you normally find in a hole of a lizard, my brothers and my sisters? Does it normally tend to be clean? Tends to be extremely impure, right? And it's also very, very narrow. If, right, these non-Muslims were to enter, these kuffar were to enter into the hole of a lizard, you would also go running into it as well. So the Messiah was asked, are you speaking about the Jews and the Christians? He said, for men, who else? Ah. Messiah said this 1400 years ago, guys. And the hadith is authentic. There's nothing wrong with the chain of narration. Right? From the signs of prophecy. Right? You're, looking for, you're looking for something now to increase your iman? That the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke the truth. Here it is. Over 1400 years ago he goes. Right? If you were now to see them entering into the hole of a lizard, you'd go and do that as well. The hole, my brothers and my sisters, is impure. Huh? Extremely narrow. Meaning that you're willing to go to lengths just so you could what? Be like them. You know, a couple of years ago, I gave a lecture in, um, what's that university? In, uh, it's called South Bank. South Bank University. This is back in 2014. And I was giving some examples of how today men have lost their ghayrah. They've lost their protective jealousy, right? Everyone wants to be like Kanye West. For his divorce. Huh? How he used to flash his wife around, say, flash her around. Our women are precious, my brothers and my sisters. They're more precious to us than diamonds and pearls and our bank cards. Anyone here in their right mind would take out his bank card and start flashing, hey, look, everyone. Huh? Here's my 16 digit number. I don't think anyone in their right mind would do that. Our women are more precious than that. But because the likes of Kanye West and some of these other kuffar rappers are flashing their women around, we started doing that as well. Hey, everybody, come look at my wife. Not so long ago, I seen a video of a man on his wedding day inviting, inviting a guy that his wife-to-be had a crush on or, something that, or someone that she loves listening to. Right? And he got sent to me. I was like, what is it? Please, start watch it. Brother's telling me. Yeah? I think the singer walks in and she starts shaking. Oh! Huh? And then he comes and hugs her. He comes and hugs her, my brothers and my sisters. Where did this type of practice, this type of conduct come from, my brothers and my sisters? None other than the Jews and the Christians. Something as low as that. We have now what? become so desensitized to it 
simply because of the things that we kept on looking at. On the red carpet, right? Comes and flashes his wives. All of these footballers flashing their wives. Let's go and flash our wives as well. Anyways, I was trying to make a point. I quoted this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu There's another narration. You know what the other narration says? حَتَّى لَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدَهُمْ جَامَعَ مْرَأَتَهُ فِي الطَّرِيقِ لَفَعَلْتُمُهُ Right? So much so that if one was to now have sexual intercourse with his partner or with his wife on the road, you'd go and do that as well. وَاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُهُ Around that time, I came across a news article of a Muslim couple carrying out sexual practices in, what's that place called? Westfield. The one in West London. So I use this as an example, just so people realize, what are we doing? Right? We mention these narrations, my brothers and my sisters, it shocks people. Why does it shock people? Because we've become so far away from our religion. Right? We have lost our way. We've lost our identity, my brothers and my sisters. And again, I'm not saying that we're going to be rude or horrible, right? Towards non-Muslims. No, Lakum Deenukum Waliyadeen. You have your religion, I'm going to have mine. This is what Allah sent down, and this is what I'm going to adorn myself with. I'm a principled individual. This statement, my brothers and my sisters, Wallahi, shakes me. You know, Abdullah ibn Amr mentioned, Man bana bi ardin mushrikina wa sana'a fi nayruzihim wa mihrajanihim وَتَشَبَّهَ بِهِمْ حَتَّى يَمُوتْ حُشِّرَ مَعْهُمْ يَمَ الْقِيَامِ Whoever builds a home in the lands of the mushrikeen وَصَنَعَ نَيْرُوزَهُمْ And he takes part in their festivals. Nairuz was the new year of Persians. وَمِهْرَجَانِهِمْ And also, right, takes part in their festivals. وَتَشَبَّهَ بِهِمْ And he resembles them, imitates them up until he dies. He will be gathered with them on Yom Al Qiyamah. He will be gathered with them Yom Al Qiyamah. You know what the principle is, my brothers and my sisters? Woman akthara min shayin mata alayh. Whoever is excessive in doing something, he's very likely going to die like that. And whoever dies in a particular state, he's going to be resurrected like that on Yom Al Qiyamah. Right? وَالْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبْ And the Prophet ﷺ told us that one is going to be with the ones that he loves. We love Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't think anyone loves him anymore, right? Everyone loves Messi now. Huh? He's undoubted now, صح? The goat. صحيح? We're crazy over him. Huh? We love him to bits. We spend our days speaking about him. Right? And it may well be that not a single statement of the Prophet ﷺ comes out of our mouths. Messi done this, Messi done that. Huh? Sure, some of us here know the Liverpool X1, first team, on the top of our minds, right? Hifdan wa muraja'atan. We've got it memorized. We even do muraja' on it. You know how we do muraja' on the Quran? Huh? Muraja'. You have close revision, you have far revision. Huh? For those who have studied at Quranic institutions, close muraja, far muraja, we revise it. Say, eleven aside, you even know who's on the bench. No one was injured. And my brothers and my sisters, how many statements of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have we memorized? Right. Think about that for a moment, guys. Wallahi sad. You know, in previous times, if they wanted to annihilate the Muslims, what would they use? Huh. Today the conversation is hot, huh? If you don't find me, guys, then ask about me, huh? Huh? If they wanted to annihilate the Muslims, what would they do, guys? They would use their swords, right? They would annihilate them in that manner. They would spill their blood. You think they need swords for you today, guys? That oh, Allah. 
they don't need swords to take out the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, my brothers and my sisters, وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ The Jews and the Christians, they will never be pleased with you. They will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. Until you follow their religion. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, the fact that they love, the fact that they love, for you to resemble them and to be like them and to join them, it should be enough of a reason for us to try and be different from them. It should be enough. Also Allah Azza wa Jalla says to, uh, tells us in the Quran, وَدَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِكُمْ كُفَارًا حَسَدًا right? Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, they wish, right? If you could apostate because of the hasad, the envy they have for you, وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يَرُدُّوكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنْ إِسْتَطَاعُوا They will keep on fighting with you up until they can cause you to renegade to leave the fold of Islam. And different tactics and strategies are being used to strip you of your identity. Right? They always talk about de-radicalization. Right? This guy is a radical, so we need to de-radicalize him. What we are in need today, my brothers and sisters, is de-liberalization. We are becoming more and more inclined towards what? Liberalism. Watering down our religion. We are in need of someone what? To purify us, to clean us. Because of how much our minds have become so polluted, right? Ah. Let's now go into the issue of Christmas. Before I do, everyone stand up. Quickly get the blood circulating and sit back down. Inshallah, I should only go on maybe for another 15 minutes and then we're done. You guys have done absolutely amazing to remain attentive as millennials for this whole period. Yeah, we're nearly done, inshallah. Ta'ala. We're nearly done. Okay, everyone, sit back down. If you need to do star jumps, do star jumps as well. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Tell them to get ready when they can, whenever you're ready. I've just been told that one of the sisters wants to take a shahada. Allahu Akbar. So just get ready, bin Allah Ta'ala. As soon as we finish, she wants to do on the mic. Every time I come to North London, it's always a shahada, mashallah. Even last time around in Kilburn, we had a sister who took a shahada. When we was going through a tawheed, right? So always when we speak about Tawheed eh? and Shirk, that someone takes the Shahada. Jazakum Allah khairan. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless her. Let's quickly, inshallah ta'ala, take the conversation to Tahni'atul Kuffar. Right? Congratulating the Kuffar on their festivals and their days of celebration. Merry Christmas. What does this kalima, what does this statement entail? Right? Is it just something that is minor? It's just a statement that I'm uttering with my tongue. My brothers and my sisters, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I have countless hadith which we're not going to have time to go through, of how he tried to treat the negative statements that some of the companions would utter. He didn't make takfir of them. He didn't say that they're kuffar or that they're mushriks the moment they uttered certain statements that had shirki connotations attached to it. No. Some of the statements that sometimes we utter, my brothers and my sisters, right, are extremely filthy and dangerous. Right? In contrary to the sharia. For example now, I like this example. Swearing on your dead nun's grave. Swearing on your mom's life. I swear on my dad's knife. I swear on my children. Sahih. Very, very common. Walala. Very common. Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, huh? Man halafa bi ghayri laifa qad ashrak. Whoever swears by Abdul Allah has committed shirk. I'm not saying that anyone here who has done that or who may do that in the future accidentally becomes a kafir or a mushrik. 
right? But it's actually shirk. Everyone huh, becomes extremely gobsmacked, flabbergasted the moment you hear about a woman becoming impregnated, right? Committing fahisha outside of marriage. It's a big deal in the area. Sahih. It's a big deal. That's a major sin, my brothers and my sisters. Murder is a major sin. It's a big deal in the community. But there are certain things that we might say that are in a category above major sins. You have minor shirk and then you have major shirk as well. Are your brothers and sisters with me? May Allah Azza wa protect us from that. Right? So now swearing by other than, your, other, other than Allah Azza wa Jal is in a level or in a category that is above major sins. Right? So a lot of the time, my brothers and my sisters, we don't mean it when we utter certain statements. But does that now validate what you have said? Someone will say, I didn't mean it. You know I didn't mean it. I know, yes, you didn't mean it. Then stay away from it. Try your utmost best to withhold from uttering such statement. Right? You may well again fall into the same utterance once more. But you need to hold yourself back. Right? Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he says the following. وَأَمَّا التَّهْنِئَةُ بِشَعَارِ الْكُفْرِ الْمُخْتَصَّةِ بِهِ فَحَرَامُ لِلْتِفَاقِ Congratulating the kuffar, the disbelievers, on the rituals that belong only to them. Then this is haram by the consensus of scholars. When you say Merry Christmas, my brothers and my sisters, what does it actually entail? Uh, I don't think anyone here would congratulate their friends for having committed a major sin, right? Would anyone here say, oh, mashallah, you've done great. Congratulations for committing a zina, for carrying out a murder. Would anybody do that? No, you wouldn't. If that's the case, my brothers and my sisters, then why would we Muslims congratulate another for celebrating Christmas, a festival commemorating Jesus becoming the son of God? Isn't this what they believe? That on the 25th of December, this is when Jesus was born. This is when Jesus became the Son of God. Even though my brothers and my sisters, this cannot be proven historically. Right? It cannot be proven historically that he was born in winter. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells in the Quran, Rutaban janiya. Who can give me the beginning of the verse? Huh? Walatasaqat. Huh? Different way, hey. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Maryam to shake the palm tree. Right? And after shaking it, these rutab, these dates will come down. And the way it was described, my brothers and my sisters, that it's impossible for it to be like this in winter. Right? For the first three centuries, this issue of Christmas wasn't even known after Christ had passed away. It was something that was innovated, which we'll come on to later on, okay? But now my brothers and my sisters, think about it. You are congratulating Bob or John or Charlotte. Merry Christmas, huh? Enjoy your day, enjoy celebrating, right? Jesus becoming the son of God. Do we feel good with that, my brothers and my sisters? You wouldn't do that, right? After coming to know that so-and-so carried out a major sin. This is worse than that, my brothers and my sisters. Someone will turn around and say, oh, the issue of Christmas is no longer a religious aspect. Huh? It has lost its historical context. It's just something commercial now. Ah, my brothers and my sisters, the Christian cross. Huh? You guys know what the Christian cross is? That people wear today. A lot of people, why are they wearing it? Are they wearing it because they actually believe in it? Would you also agree, my brothers and my sisters, that certain things that people wear today has lost its historical significance? Does it now make it okay? It's a question to you guys. Huh? Swearing on your dead man's grave. Oh, we don't mean it like that. But does it make it okay now for you to utter it? Huh? Insulting how one's nose is. Right? Is that okay, guys? Is that something that's all right? Uh, especially within the Somali community, eh? they say certain things about a particular nose. You guys know what I'm talking about. 
Hmm? Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, when you speak about someone's facial features, in essence, you're actually having a go at Allah Azza wa Jal. Did you know that? Who's the one that created him like that? Allah Azza wa Jal. Does he have any control of his nose or his ears, the way Allah Azza wa Jal created his lips, his eyebrows? Does he have control over that? I'm not talking about the goth who takes everything off and, huh? and puts like 101 pierces across his body. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone that Allah Azza wa Jal created in a particular manner. Does he have control over that? If he's short or if he's tall, and then you start mocking him, right? Start making fun of him. In essence, my brothers and my sisters, you're actually having a go at Allah Azza wa Jal. This particular sin varies between major kufr and a major sin. Huh? You see it's shifting in between these two categories of sins that I just mentioned. If this individual now knows, yes, it is Allah that created him like that, and he still decides to insult, and on the back of his mind, he knows it's Allah, but you know, I'm still going to do it. It may well be that he leaves the fault of Islam. It is that serious. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Let subur rih. Don't insult the wind. Did you guys know that you're not allowed to insult the wind? How many of us, we insulted the cold weather? In most recent times, right? We insulted it. Tayyip, who's the one that sent the wind? Who's the one that sent the cold? Did I send it? It was Allah that sent it. Does the wind and the cold and the snow have any control over themselves? So in essence, who are you having to go at? So now if one doesn't mean it, brother, I don't mean it. You know what I mean, right? Right? Does it still like make it okay for him to utter that? Doesn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la taqoolu ra'ina. Don't say ra'ina. Wa qool unzurna. O oh, you who believe, when Allah Azza wa Jalla says, O oh, you who believe, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, make sure you lend your ear. Fa'ar'iha sam'ak. You should take this personally. Are you a believer? Allah Azza wa Jal is calling you out directly. You should fix up, right? Stand up and be ready to embrace what Allah Azza wa Jal has to say. Are you not a believer? Yes, you are. Because you're about to be told something extremely, extremely important. And you're about to be warned from something that is very evil. So pay attention. Right? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amnu, oh you believe, la taqoolu ra'ina. What does ra'ina mean? Ra'ina, my brothers and my sisters, comes from, right? Uh, it comes from someone now being a wali, being in charge, being an authority, taking care of his flock, taking care of his children. We say that the leader of the Muslims is a ra'i. He's someone that's looking after them. You as a father, you're a ra'i. Right? You are a shepherd who's looking after his flock. Why is Allah Azza wa Jalla saying, do not say, la taqoolu ra'ina. Don't say to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ra'ina, meaning, look after us. Or take care of us. Why? No, but we're just talking about just taking care of us, helping us out in that sense. Simply because the Jews, they used to use this word, right, as an insult, mocking the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi And because it was used in that manner, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was instructed by Allah Azza to tell his companions don't do this. وَقُولْ unzurna, But rather use the term unzurna, which is very similar to ra'ina, right, so that we could be different from the Jews who are using this term in a way that is extremely, extremely insulting to our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So please don't try to justify to me that it's okay for someone to just say Merry Christmas, I don't mean much. I don't intend it like that. Right? Like I said before, what I fear, wallahi, that it will be shoved down our throats. You have to say it. And if you don't say you're a bigot, or you're someone who's extremely intolerant. We're moving towards that direction. And that is because we are becoming further and further away from our religion. We don't have the answers. When somebody says that to us, so we are psychologically defeated. Right? We are psychologically defeated. And the kuffar don't, no, don't no longer need to use what? Their swords to take your lives. It's an ideological indoctrination. 
with what is being pushed around us. So he goes on to say, my brothers and my sisters, I'm nearly finished. You guys have done absolutely amazing. <sighs> so he mentioned that this is something that is haram bil ittifaq, right? This is something that is agreed upon by all of the scholars. مثل أن يهنئهم بعيادهم مصومهم فيقول For example, congratulating them on their festivals, right? Their days of celebration or the times when they fast. فيقول, and he says, عيد مبارك عليك Right? Have a wonderful عيد أو تهنأ بهذا العيد ونحوه Right? Up until when he says, subhanallah فهذا إن سلم قائله من الكفر فهو من المحرمات Right? Look what he goes on to say. If one who says this has been saved from kufr, it is still forbidden. وَهُوَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ أَنْ يُهَنِّئَهُ بِسُجُودِهِ لِلصَّلِيبِ Allahu Akbar. He says it is like congratulating someone for prostrating to the cross. Would anybody do that? I don't think anyone would. Right? بَلْ ذَٰلِكَ أَعْظَمُ إِثْمًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَشَدُّ مَقْتًا مِنَ التَّهْنِئَةِ بِشُرْبِ الْخَمْرِ وَقَتْلِ النَّفْسِ وَارْتِكَابِ الْفَرْجِ الْحَرَامِ وَنَحْوِهِ He says, in fact, it is a greater sin and more hated by Allah Azza wa Jal than congratulating someone for drinking wine or murdering someone or having illicit sexual relations and so on. And then he says, وَكَثِيرٌ مِمَّنْ لَا قَدْرَ لِلدِّينِ عِنْدَهُ يَقَعُ فِي ذَلِكِ Many of those who have no respect for their religion, they fall into this error. Subhanallah. Many who have no respect for their religion, or lack respect for their religion, or veneration for Allah Azza wa Jal, or who don't study a tawheed enough. And when we study a tawheed, the more we learn about Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers and my sisters, the more Allah becomes venerated and glorified in our hearts, guys. When you think about it, it just requires you to sometimes someone says, I feel no connection between me and Allah. And that is because we don't know much about him. That sister that you knock on her door for a marriage meeting, what caused you now to go and knock on that door, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? Who can tell me? The reason why you knocked on her door is because you came to know that she's like this and she's like that, right? That caused you to become inclined towards her. That caused you to have a certain feeling towards her. Isn't that so? You came to know about certain qualities and characteristics that she has. I'm not comparing Allah as well to this lady. But I think you guys get the point. The more you learn about the qudurat, the capabilities of Allah Azza wa Jal, the more you're going to be humbled in front of Him. The more you're going to be shy and embarrassed to sin in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't look at how small the sin is. Look at the magnitude of who you are disobeying. And that's the more you learn about him, my brothers and my sisters. When I give these lectures, my brothers and my sisters, it isn't just to get a rise out of the crowd. For one to walk away, yeah, I feel great. That was a good paracetamol. We want to take practical steps towards bettering ourselves. And that is by us studying, guys. Learning about Allah. Learning about the Tawheed. Otherwise, our Iman goes up, it comes crashing down. He then says, they do not realize the offensiveness of their actions. Right? Whoever congratulates a person of his disobedience or bid'ah or kufr exposes himself to the wrath and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, my brothers and sisters, Ibn al-Qayyim is not some Wahhabi that is living on the earth today. He passed away over 700 years ago. There are individuals who understood the religion of Islam. Don't try and dismiss this and say, oh, it was just some random guy who said this. La. Remember guys, I just quote. Abu Taymiyyah needs to stay safe. Huh? So he just quotes. He's not here to put forth any of his own views and opinions. Right? To conclude, my brothers and my sisters, and birthdays and mother days and what do you call it? Mother days? Mother's day, sorry. Ajib, huh? Kufar who take their mothers, I just got told, maybe comment on this, right? 
the kuffar who take their parents to care homes. Huh? They want to teach us about how to treat their mother. Huh? They take their mothers where? To care homes. They die inside of these care homes. And you want to tell us how to treat our mothers every single day is Mother's Day. Agreed? How many times does the Sharia speak about treating your mothers in the best possible way? The other day I gave a khutbah, you can find it on my YouTube channel, about murder. And at the end of the khutbah, I spoke about our mothers, our parents, right? How one time Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he came across a man who was doing tawaf around the Kaaba and he was carrying his mother. He came up to Abdullah ibn Umar and he says, have I now fulfilled the rights of my mother and everything that she's done for me? He goes, La, no. Huh? Not even a single talqa. You know what talqa is? It's a contraction. Anyone ever seen a woman in labor? She has these contractions that are extremely painful. They're in so much pain, right? It starts and it stops. It starts and it stops. Continuous pain up until they give birth. Not a single one of them, subhanAllah. And she may have, right, 30 or 40 contractions in an hour, subhanAllah. Not even a single one of them have you paid back. But he said, you've done great. Wallahu yudzi ala Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you immensely for something small like that. Right? Man who's carrying his mother. You know, subhanAllah, today, when we receive phone calls from our mothers and our fathers, we get very, very irritated, right? Why is she always calling me? Why is she always bothering me? She's irritating me. I'm not a young kid anymore. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, there will come a day and I ask Allah Azza not to test you all with it. That our parents, they pass away before us. You're going to wish that they are bombarding your phones. You're going to wish that, my brothers and my sisters. Mother is no longer calling. Right? We disrespect them. We ridicule them. Right? To conclude, my brothers and my sisters, The two pagan festivals which has or which have heavenly, heavily influenced Christmas are Saturnalia and also Sol Invictus. Saturnalia, my brothers and my sisters, was the festival that the pagan Romans celebrated in order to commemorate the temple of Saturn. The temple of Saturn, my brothers and my sisters, was an ancient Roman temple to the god of Saturn. However, what happened to this temple was that it became damaged by fire. And it was again restored in or around the 4th century. MashaAllah. The god of Saturn, he couldn't protect his home, eh? couldn't protect his temple. So on this day, just as Christmas Day, Public festivities would take place which involved sacrifices and the making and giving of small presents. Additionally, there was a time of general relaxation, just how we relax in this Christmas holiday, or should I say, Shirkmas holiday. Feasting, merrymaking, right? During Saturnalia, businesses were postponed. And even the slaves were feasted. There was drinking, ah, gambling, singing, and even public nudity. It was the best days, according to the poet Catullus. A time to eat and drink and to be merry. Pagans decorated their houses with clippings of evergreen shrubs and decorated living trees with bits of metal and replicas of their god. It's about to get very, very interesting, guys. Anyone here heard of Tertullian? Tertullian, my brothers and my sisters, was best known for, right, was best known for being the first writer in 
Latin, known to use the term Trinity. Right? He was known as the father of Latin Christianity and the founder of Western theology. Right? Like, this is shocking. He complained that too many Christians were imitating paganistic practices of adorning their houses with lamps and wreaths of laurel during the winter solstice or solstice, however they pronounce it. Right? He began to complain, right? That now these Christians are becoming affected by pagans, by mushriks. Ah. But even then, my brothers and my sisters, what happened? They continued up until that which they practice, their religion became distorted. Now, my brothers and my sisters, isn't this exactly what's happening right now? Isn't this exactly what is happening right now? We have, of course, always people that are going to defend the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there will be a large group of people that will continue to be affected by none other than the non-Muslims. Right? And like I said, also you have the other pagan festival that had a huge influence on Christianity, on Christmas, Sol Invictus, which was also celebrated by Romans in veneration of solar deities such as Ilah Gabal. It's not a Somali word, by the way. Huh? Also known as Baal, right? Followers of the gods would gather together on the 25th of December and celebrate, right? Whatever we mentioned. Now, my brothers and my sisters, how does one think that he can convince me that it's okay for us to celebrate Christmas or to have a Christmas tree inside of my house on the 25th day? Yesterday, an uncle came up to me, Mazir Furqan Lassa, and he said, How do I respond to one brother who's telling me huh, that it's okay for me to have huh, a Christmas tree inside of my house? I just want, you know, that, that my children to feel, you know, this, that, and. That's how it starts. Psychologically defeated. Huh? Psychologically defeated. They didn't even need to take a sword to strike your neck. Just so they could take you off the face of this earth. But slowly, slowly you are being indoctrinated. Because of us being what? Bombarded with everything we see around us. Hmm? He said, I don't see any significance with this tree. Out of all the times... That you could have bought a tree, you bought it on Christmas Day. And of all of the times, you bought it on Christmas Day. Resembling them. Huh? Cubit by cubit, arm's length by arm's length. We will follow the Jews and the Christians. Huh? We will follow them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all types of filth and evil. My brothers and my sisters. You will see a lot of things being said on social media. Individuals who have gone far away from normative Islam diluting and downplaying the seriousness of shirk. Some of you guys may have seen me making comparisons between shirk and also one carrying out a filthy, despicable sin. Sahih? Tamiya has been getting hammered on TikTok, huh? Absolute annihilation. Why am I using these examples to grab your attention? To grab your attention. Oh, this is worse than that. Ah, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. People who understand shirk and tawheed, they're not going to react like that. As I mentioned to you guys before, you have major sins, zina, murder, and whatever have you. Then you have minor shirk, and then you have what? Major shirk, right? Look at the reaction when it comes to major sins. And then look at the reaction, my brothers and my sisters, when it comes to what pertains to Christmas. I had a relative of mine, wallahi al-azim. A relative of mine sent me Merry Christmas after he saw the poster of this lecture. <laughs> well, I sent me Merry Christmas. You guys are laughing, huh? He wanted a reaction out of me. That's exactly what he said. I wanted you, I just wanted to see your reaction. Well, I just really upset me, right? I have discussions with people who don't agree with me. I don't get upset. I have a lovely smile that defeats a lot of people. Huh? If you have your evidences, why do you need to get angry? But wallahi al-azim, the fact that you know 
or you've seen now a poster where we're talking about shirk and also Christmas and now we've gone through a lot of things that is in contrary to the Sharia, right? Something like just resembling the kuffar, which can lead to something extremely, extremely problematic. I got very annoyed at him. And eventually I blocked him, right? And I said, you're behaving like this, right? You're uttering these statements because a tawheed has become diminished in your heart, right? If someone disagrees with me, no problem, I'll have a discussion with him. But don't try and make a joke out of it. Wallahi under that, it was on my WhatsApp story, Send me Merry Christmas. And then we went back and forth in the end, he says to me also, Happy New Year. Right? Musiba. Right? It's a Musiba, guys. Downplaying the seriousness of what is normative Islam. Don't fall for that trap. Right? Social media has a huge influence. No. I think the sister wants to take a shahada. Also, brothers, you guys have done amazing. May Allah has a reward every single one of you guys. The average attention span for millennials is how long? Does anyone know? The scholars here, they took three different views, huh? On the fifth issue, huh? Some time ago, I told the brother to check. And he came across an article that said 15 minutes. No, sorry. It said seven minutes. I think it was. And then I checked the date of the article, I realized it's a bit outdated. Huh? If that was then, or a couple of years ago, how long do you think it is now? 15 seconds? May Allah Azza wa Jal honor every single one. Wallahi brothers and sisters, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Right? The fact that you guys come on a Friday night, when I know you could be enjoying yourselves, carrying out all types of filth to fill out the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep every single one of you guys steadfast. Learn your deen, brothers and sisters. If we don't know our religion, brothers and sisters, don't be surprised that your son tomorrow, or from the sisters. Yeah. If you don't study your religion today, my brothers and my sisters, don't be surprised tomorrow that your son Muhammad is carrying huh, the big Christmas tree into your house. Don't be surprised. Or your son Muhammad wakes up and he says, Dad, I have a different pronoun. <laughs> well, my brothers, I'm being serious. I'm dealing with cases every now and again. Confused with his identity. Doesn't know. Right? Show sure you guys seen that video, Jubilee video, Jubilee, whatever it's called. Huh? I messaged them two brothers. As soon as I watched it some time ago, I messaged them. I was like, Jazakum Allah khairan. May Allah Azza wa bless you both. One of them said, I'll actually watch some of your videos before I went on. Huh? Alhamdulillah. Right? It brings me a lot of joy to see that there are still people who are pushing normative Islam. Learn your religion to save the next generation, guys. Study books of Tawheed. Study books of Fiqh. Right? May Allah Azza wa bless you all. Can you say you too when someone says Merry Christmas? I feel so awkward when my work colleagues, they say it to me. Tell you my brothers and my sisters, when you say you two, what exactly are you saying? They say Merry Christmas to you and then you're, you're back to square one, right? Try to change the conversation. And try to explain to them that this is something that is in contrary to my Sharia or the deen that I follow. Does that make sense? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our beloved Ustad. What are the conditions for Tawbah? <coughs> conditions for Tawbah are three. If it is a sin between you and Allah Azza wa Number one, that you have to be remorseful. Regret that which you have carried out. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, an ya'zima an la ya'uda ilayha. He makes the decision there and then that I'm never going to go back to it. He tells himself that. And he means it. I'm not going to go back to it. However, if later on he falls into it, he has to repent again. But you make the decision there and then, I'm finished. Number three, he stops that sin there and then. You can't be stabbing someone and saying, I stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. La. Or committing zina, while he's doing the zina, he's saying, I stuck for Allah, I too be late. La. You have to stop that sin and then repent. However, if it involves the rights of others, 
Like for example, you took the money of someone. Can you just say, Ya Allah, forgive me? No, you have to give that money back. You have to seek forgiveness from a person. If you backbite it another, you have to go and seek their forgiveness. Does that make sense, guys? Come on, yeah. Secret Santa. Let's say you have a different intention. To give them gifts. Yeah, but in the term of Secret Santa. You know the way Santa looks, right? Red and yellow. You know what I read? You know what I read, brothers and sisters? That it actually came from Coca Cola. It was used as a commercial symbol for Coca Cola. Right? Allah wa'ala whether that's true or not. Yes, there was this type of guy that used to come and give gifts and whatever have you. Huh? Again, it can't be proven, right? Historically speaking, authentically. But hey, this is something that is what? It's good that you actually asked that. I wanted to touch onto it. The children are being nurtured from a young age to appreciate some Santa. When in fact they should be appreciating who? Who bought them the gifts? Their parents, right? Their parents and their relatives bought them their gifts. And they're thanking who? Some shaitan that comes through the chimney, right? Billahi <laughs> alaykum guys. <laughs> Wallahi, they won't attribute these gifts to their parents. They'll attribute it to the Santa. From a very young age, they're being taught, right? That which is being normalized is not appreciating your parents. Like so I'm very, very deep. No. Like fairy godmother and whatever have you. Yeah. You think about it, right? Huh? And isn't it all a lie, guys, when you think about it? It's a lie. That they normalize from a very young age. No. So we don't engage in that kind of stuff. Buy them enough gifts, brothers. Why are we making it look like as if the 365 days has become one day? Huh? 365 days you have in a year. Give them gifts, never ending gifts throughout the year. Is that really going to affect your relationship with them? I'm sorry, I'm not going to engage in any celebration on this day. We have the rest, I'm gonna shower him with gifts. I'm gonna take him out, why? Huh. Yeah, on Eid, give them a gift. And that's even a way now to bring them close. This is what we celebrate. Look, day of Eid, after 30 days of huh, thirst and hunger, now we are celebrating here. And they might even start asking questions, opportunity. My brother, he asked if someone doesn't pray, does he leave the fold of Islam? Is it kufr? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Ahdu Ladi Bainana wa Bainam as Salah. The difference between us and them is a the salah. Who's them? The agnostic, the atheist, the Hindu, uh, what's the other one called? Sikh. Right? The difference between us and them is a the salah. Whoever leaves of the salah, then he has committed kufr. Siri picked up on it and she said the Hindu is an Indian English language daily newspaper owned by the Hindu group. Siri, you're wrong. Huh? Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? The difference between us and them is the salah. The companions, if they saw a woman not wearing hijab, they said, oh, maybe she's neutral Islam. If they saw someone not fasting, oh, maybe he's ill. Someone's not going out for hajj, or oh, maybe he doesn't have the financial capability. But when it came to the salah, there's no excuses. You can't pray standing up, you have to pray sitting down. You can't pray sitting down, you have to pray lying down. Are you ever Pardon for not praying. Oh. Does that make sense, guys? You are never pardoned, brothers. Allah, brothers and sisters, you know the salah, it really, really relieves us of some, a lot of the difficulties that we go through. What would the Messiah do? Whenever he went through a difficulty, he would run to the salah. Ibrahim started every time he went through it, he would run to the salah. Inni muhajir ila rabbi sayahdeen. Right? When that Egyptian Tyrannical king, a ruler, right? Kidnapped his wife Sarah. What did Ibrahim run to do? He went to pray. It eases the pain that you're experiencing at a time, brothers and sisters. 
And it removes the filth and the evil from your life. I don't care if you've become addicted to all types of filth and evil on the internet. Go and pray, guys. Go and pray. It's only a matter of time before you move away from it. Inna salatu tana'a al-fahshaa wa munkar. Salah removes the filth and the evil from your life. And yes, at the beginning, when you haven't been praying, and now we start praying, it's going to feel a little bit, you know, ah. And that is because, my brothers and my sisters, your body is no different to someone who drank poison. What happens if you drink poison? Huh? You need that drip, right? That's going to push the poison out. It takes a bit of time. It's not like a two-minute job. Sahih? It takes time. The sins are like poison, as Ibn Qayyim says. You have to what? Huh? You have to do what? A tasfiyah. What does tasfiyah mean? Right? Two things come under it. In order now to remove the filth that we've become so accustomed to, tathir wa nama. Tathir meaning purification, as in, you say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. By repenting to Allah. And then also what? Building a building that is filled with righteous deeds. Metaphorically speaking. You have to righteous deeds. And you have to keep doing it. Up until you reach a point, inshallah ta'ala, where you're going to be in a much better position. Um, From my young brother, how old are you? Me, I'm nine. MashaAllah. <laughs> That's what they all say, yeah? I'm eight and I'm turning, yeah? Good. Where are you from? I'm from Sweden. Sweden, mashallah. Stockholm. No, Malmo. Malmo. Um, yeah? You know when you said you're going to, um, what was it, um, celebrate Christmas? My mom always said, um, don't do this stuff. It's um, what um, the people that have, like Christians and other people that. Mashallah, your mom's a very good mother. Today, when you go to her, kiss her on the forehead. Huh? Good. Do you feel like what she said to you before has an effect on the way you think? Huh? <laughs> now, your mom told you this before, right? Do you feel like that um, it affected the way you think? Of course, in a good way, right? Of course, this is why you're telling me this. Your mom told you this before. Today, you had a lecture and you're telling yourself, oh, what my mom told me was right. Sahih? So can you see my brothers and my sisters? What you instill within your kids from a very young age, it goes a very long way. It goes a very, very long way. Stop saying, oh, they're only kids. Huh? It's not a big deal. They'll grow out of it. Huh? This is what they all say. Right? This is what they all say. One time I had, well, I, I told one of the relatives, your daughter's listening to Justin Bieber. Huh? She goes, well, I'm still a young kid. Let her. Right? I tell them they shouldn't be hanging around or getting used to hanging around with the opposite gender, even if he's a cousin. Well, like, they're still little kids. You know, one of the most recent cases that I dealt with, you know what it was? Two cousins that committed zina with one another, they had to send the daughter to another country now and ask her for advice. The household has entered into turmoil. What do we do? Basic principles, my brothers and my sisters, that we needed to instill within our kids, which we downplayed, which we didn't take seriously. Yeah, simple. Prevent better than cure. Now, <laughs> prevention is better than the cure, as the doctor says. Huh? Do we have any pharmacists and doctors here? That's what they say, right? Prevention is better than the cure. Then you're what? Seething around looking for a way to solve your problems. It might be a little too late. May Allah Azza wa bless you all. Jazakum Allah khairan wa ahsan Allahu ilaykum. I'm going to love and leave you guys. No questions, eh? Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.